strange. <laughs> Minister, thanks for joining us. Uh, could you shed uh, a little bit of light on the situation whereby uh, a specialist neurologist could not be secured uh, in this important area of paediatrics? Well, the difficulty we had that interviews were held in relation to urology and uh, with a particular interest in uh, people that suffer from either spina bifida, hydrocephalus or maybe both conditions uh, because there is, uh, there is a particular difficulty uh, uh, with people that suffer from this condition. And interviews were held, but unfortunately uh, the right person was not found. We intend to have... Uh, interviews again on the 13th of May and we're hoping that mm. at that point we will in fact be able to find mm. uh, the person with the right speciality knowledge mm. uh, that we can put in place. But it's more than that. I mean clearly um, very young children simply have to have their condition managed. It hasn't reached an acute phase and with the right management it, it never should reach that acute phase mm -hmm. other than the type of uh, incidence that you would have in the general population. Of course, so there yeah. are people out there that in fact have uh, the ability to manage to manage uh, uh, children with this condition course, uh, yeah. but it seems that the whole uh, the whole mechanism of how that happens has gotten caught up mm -hmm. in a, a, a difficult structure and absolutely. we're going to have to take but a look at that yeah, absolutely and, and you 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 uh, shed a bit of light on that mm -hmm. is, is it gone to the stage now where, where we make things so complicated for ourselves that we really can't see wood from trees anymore and specifically uh, that's just me being a little bit clever with words. More specifically, there was genuine confusion and anger amongst yeah. the parents when you announced that. Can you understand? Can, of how, course. Yeah. I mean, if it was my child, I, I just I always put myself in that position. I always put myself in, what would I do in that circumstances? And I would be very angry to thought that my child, if their condition was properly managed at mm. a very young age, that they wouldn't have to reach a position where, in fact, the, mm. the condition became chronic. And mm. I, that's the aim, and that's what we should have. Mm. But we will have to talk to, if you like, the representative bodies uh, to make sure that we, ha we can actually put a procedure in place in order to ensure that people have access to a service as you would in the general population. Mm -hmm. Minister, talk to us a little bit about the mobility issue. Oh well, um, I suppose um, when I first got this job, uh, the issue of the mobility allowance and the transport uh, grant um, came up as an issue and uh, basically um, the, the Ombudsman has done a report that says that uh, uh, we are operating boat grants illegally, uh, that we should, uh, one, extend it to people who are over 65, and two, in terms of the Disability Act, uh, that we should uh, consider as well people who would have uh, disability conditions, for instance, such as uh, agoraphobia, maybe depression, things like that, mm. and uh, that they then would have an entitlement uh, to the mobility allowance as well. The difficulty with that, that if we were to be in full compliance in relation to what the Ombudsman has said, then it could cost, it could cost now, it hasn't been fully costed, but it could cost between 170 and 300 million a year. We haven't got that money. And I don't think that even in the, in the best days of the economy that we had that type of money. Of course. Uh, what we do have is the 10.4 million, which has always been set aside in respect of these two grants. And we still have that. This is not an issue of money in respect of people that are already in receipt of this, these two, um, these both allowance and grant. And we are now looking, and we have a very good group put together, uh, one who has an expertise in technology, uh, a person with a disability themselves who uses the motorised transport grant, and uh, a whole plethora, the Department of Transport, Social Protection, for the first time ever, we have all of these people sitting around the table trying to find a solution to this issue. Yeah. You, and you, it is proving very difficult. Oh, I'd imagine so. You, you used the, the term a culture of illegality in the mm. Department of Health. That's a hell of a claim, isn't Well, it? that's what the, the, that's what the Ombudsman said when she appeared before the health committee she said that there is a culture uh, of illegality in mm -hmm. the Department of Health and mm -hmm. um, I think it was flowery language and maybe said for effect uh, in terms of the two grants that I'm talking about yes mm -hmm. we, they were being operated illegal illegally but uh, being operated illegally 
uh, it's difficult to say this, but for, for the very best of intentions, of, to ensure of, that people had had supports, financial supports, of, in of, terms of their transport needs. Of course. So this this is not a case of of not having the will to do it. This is simply a case of process and procedure, and box ticking. And it's it's also um, a case of how do you provide a transport system for people who clearly need it? Of course. You know, course. not everyone can get on the the number three bus at the end of the road. So how how do we manage to ensure that people who need a specialised transport system mm -hmm. has it? And how do we do that? And we are working on that mm -hmm. uh, very diligently. Final question to you, Minister. You you you've come from the launch, and it it, it to me it was a, it was a happy place. It it was a joyous place, but having said that, it is little more than just a prefab. Well, is, 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 in this day and age, with, with people who are in such desperate need, is that acceptable? Well, it's. I would have to say, and I would agree with you completely, I think where children are concerned, events are always happy because they're always so glad to be in the middle of you know the whole hustle and bustle that that, that, that occurs on these I wouldn't say you've made many speeches with that, but that no, din behind you. Yeah. Well, as W.C. Fields yeah, says, yeah. never work with children or animals, Absolutely. they'll outshine you every time. <laughs> and this one was exactly the mm -hmm. same. I would have to say, though, that I have come to organisations that had incredible buildings and weren't doing as much as this organisation. Okay. And yet I come to this organisation where you have a prefab, uh, a prefab structure mm -hmm. and where there is a Saturday club that is doing incredible things. So sometimes I think it's about the structure of the organisation and not the structure of the building. Minister, thanks for joining us. Thank you. Thank you.